Hello everyone, Lee again from Monmouthshire Paranormal. Now, been quite a bit of interest about that very, very inexpensive little EM amplifier that I made, that little EM pump showing people how to make one for, well, pretty much pennies. I mentioned that it is possible to convert one of these small, everyday compact digital cameras into a very efficient infrared or full spectrum camera now if you go on ebay and buy one of these already converted you'll find all sorts of unscrupulous people who will charge you 65 75 80 or even 100 pounds and they will tell you that they've done you a great favor that they've done all these modifications and it now records in infrared or full spectrum the truth of the matter is that you can do it yourself with no electrical experience whatsoever all you need is a cheap digital camera like this. I actually paid, I think it was £20 for three old cameras like this. Somebody obviously had them knocking around in a drawer, they upgraded to something a bit better and they thought I'll stick them on eBay as a job lot, £21. So you're going to need one of these and you're also going to need a few little tools. A screwdriver that's it a very small Phillips crosshead screwdriver before we start let's talk about the nature of light um, I'm not going to bore you senseless with science but some light we can see some light we can't you're all aware of the song red yellow pink green orange purple and blue I could build a rainbow well those are the lights that we can see when you see a rainbow in the sky there are lights either side of it we just can't see it some are in the ultraviolet, some are in the infrared. But what most people don't realise is that the lens inside your camera is already more sensitive to light than your eye. Now, here's a brief example. Most of you probably have a TV, DVD or um, hi-fi remote control quite near you. Grab hold of that control. The bit that you normally point towards the TV, point it towards your face and press any of the buttons. Now, with the exception of the small LED that comes on at the top, just to let you know that you're pressing the button, what do you see coming out the end of it? Absolutely nothing. Point it towards the camera, and that camera is picking up the ultraviolet emission that the TV, the DVD or the Hi-Fi reads, so that it knows what you wanted to do. This is a very simple infrared torch. Now, you can buy these on eBay. Um, people will tell you, ultimate ghost hunting tool, ultraviolet torch. They'll charge you 50 or 20 pounds for it. Nonsense. Go to a sporting goods shop. They'll sell you an ultraviolet torch there for about five or six pounds. Why would you get an ultraviolet torch in a sporting goods shop? Because golfers use them. They wander through the rough on golf courses after dark, shining their infrared, uh, sorry, their ultraviolet torches. White light, uh, sorry, white reflects ultraviolet. Makes it glow in the dark. So, if a golfer wants to get some free golf balls, they wander through the rough, shine in the ultraviolet torch, and the white balls glow so they can keep them. You might also have seen these. Now this is um, an infrared illuminator. They're about four or five pounds on eBay. Don't pay any more than six. And they're very handy. This is a small 12 volt power pack that I've rigged up. It's just got eight AA batteries in it. They always say that they'll make 12 volts. Doesn't, makes about 11.2 when the batteries are new. But we plug that in. And this is now sending out infrared. Now, there's a small light sensor on this, it makes it light sensitive so that it doesn't use it too much battery. It only really comes on when it gets dark. You might not be able to see it just now, but if I turn the light off, then we'll get a result. There you have it, infrared. Now, to my eye, looking at this, it's giving out a very dull, red glow but to you well 
It's probably wiping out the lens right now. Okay, let's get started. So you've got your camera, you've got your screwdriver. What you need to do now is to dismantle your camera. Now at this point, I think it's very important that I say that I cannot be held responsible for any damage or destruction that you cause by taking your camera apart. Not all cameras are the same. I'm familiar with Fuji cameras, so I use Fuji cameras. I will go as far as saying that most small compact digital cameras are pretty much the same inside. Okay, don't try this with DSLRs or high, other high-end cameras because then you really will get into trouble. Don't open up a DSLR camera unless you are a DSLR camera engineer because they are immensely complicated. Anyway, I think it's probably best if I reset this camera so that you can see precisely what I'm doing and then you can follow it at your own pace. Okay, on these smaller cameras that are usually about so anywhere between sort of five and eight screws, these Fuji cameras, one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to go straight ahead and remove those. Try and make sure that your, ca uh, your screwdriver has got a small ma magnetic head, makes it much easier, especially when you're replacing the screws, and always put the screws in a place where you're not going to sweep your hand and lose them because they are exceptionally tiny. When the screws are out, you're going to want to break down the camera, which by that point should be a relatively simple procedure. Now you only really need to take the back off and then you need to concentrate on this. This is your actual display. Now, it should be no more than a small clip on the side there. All you do is you Flip that clip up and then this, as you can see, becomes loose. There will be a small ribbon connector connecting the LCD display to the board. Now it shouldn't be soldered in, most of them aren't because they are built to be replaced if something goes wrong. So you just Flick that out of there like that, and then don't pull it, try and pull it off because there is another ribbon connector and it opens up like that. What you need to do now then is remove these two screws or however many screws there are on the back of the lens CD, CCD and focusing unit. Okay, now we've gone ahead and removed those two small screws and you notice that the back just folds over and there is your CCD. Now when you open the camera you're going to notice a small square of glass in one of either two places. It's either going to be here on top of the CCD or it's going to be here over the back of the lens. That is your infrared filter. That means that when you take a photograph, when you're out and about at the beach, when you're at a birthday party, just on the pub with your mates, take a photograph and it's that filter that removes all the infrared light because a camera that detects infrared tends to have um, kind of a pinkish hue to everything. Now, this camera doesn't have one in because I removed it quite some time ago, but it won't be stuck in there. All you need to do is just flick it out or better still small pair of electrician's tweezers and just lift it out if you want to make the camera strictly infrared because in this state it's now full spectrum then what you need to do is get a piece of old 35 millimeter negative now in the days when you took photographs and then sent them off for processing what you would do is receive the photographs back and there'd be a small wallet and in that wallet were your negatives. The last three inches of that film was often exposed, fully exposed. To make this purely infrared, take a small piece 
of that exposed negative, cut it to the size of the filter that you just removed, and then place that back over the CCD or over the lens. That will then make your camera 100% infrared, nothing else. But in this state, it's full spectrum. So everything from the ultraviolet through to the near infrared is now visible to this camera. What you need to do now is just reassemble what you've already taken apart. So there you have it. Your camera should now be fully reassembled, should look exactly the same as it did before. However, it now sees full spectrum, or if you've gone that bit extra and put that small piece of exposed negative inside your camera, you will now have a fully functioning infrared camera. If you're going to use it at night, you're obviously going to need some kind of illumination. We've already briefly looked at this. This is a small infrared illuminator, and if you buy a small clip that fits into the, uh, the hot shoe of a camera, then this will allow you to attach your camera to your infrared emitter. Quite comfortable to hold when you're on investigations, just turn it on, pop it into video mode, and whatever you point the camera, you'll also have a good source of infrared illumination. If you prefer, then either get one of these ultraviolet torches that we've already looked at, or buy an ultraviolet emitter. They're slightly more expensive, not a great deal. They're perhaps, I don't know, another 30 or 40% more. That still keeps them under 10 pounds. What's that? 15, 16 dollars? There we go. Anyway, I'm now going to put up a small piece of video at the end of this presentation. Um, I took this camera out last night, um, about, well, it was actually about two o'clock this morning. Now, we live in a very, very rural part of South Wales. Uh, we live on a farm. There's very little street lighting. So I took the camera over into the barn, which uh, only has two very small windows, is about 60 feet long, and you can stand on the floor and look 25 feet up into the attics. I took the camera over there with the emitter, shone it round, it'll give you a very good example of the sorts of things that you can expect to capture when you take this camera out. The illumination is excellent. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I certainly enjoyed making it. Over the next couple of weeks, I might put up a few more videos. How do you fancy learning how to make one of those REM pod detectors for under 50 pence? It can be done. Right then, boys and girls, it's now ten past two in the morning. I waited until it got particularly dark outside, and being as we live in the middle of the countryside, then it is pretty dark out there. This is the full spectrum camera. It's now in video mode, obviously. Um, with this camera, you can't put video mode into black and white, into monochrome. So you can see that sort of pink hue that I was telling you about. But what we're going to do, we're going to go out onto the farmyard forecourt where it's very dark and we'll see exactly how good it works. I've got the camera attached to a small infrared unit which you probably remember from uh, the video I showed you earlier but you can you can see that it's fitted just underneath so uh, we'll go outside I'll go over into the barn and you can see how good it is and we'll use the excuse that we need to take puppy out puppy want pee oh thought you might I thought you might here we go as you can see very dark and no, that wasn't an orb, it was a moth. Right, 
the outside lights just come on. So we'll uh, go over into the barn. See, see the, uh, the old light coming on there? Concerned. Oh look down here was the step. It's actually pitch black. In here I can't see a thing. But as you can see from the wall, there it is. As you can see from the uh, the no converted camera. Infrared is actually pretty good. I'll go up into the, uh, the beams of the barn. Just the job. And I mean, this barn is probably what 60 feet long, and you can just make out the bottom wall there. Um, so, when you consider, I mean, if you're going to use one of these indoors, certainly it'll be every bit as good as you can imagine um, I think that's all we need to say really other than um, I am actually having to you know, if I if I turn the, the infrared off it'll give you an idea exactly how dark it is in you there you go completely black there you go. if you want to get one of these little um, infrared illuminators they're dead cheap they're only a few pounds on eBay and it doesn't take much to put together one of these little small 12 volt power supply that you just pop in your pocket well my uh, battery warning light has just come on and I just pulled the, uh, the socket out of the infrared because I really can't see where I'm going so I just caught it on the wall so uh, I'm just going to go inside now because it is actually getting quite nippy out here Surely, folks. <laughs> 